Uh, okay. Great. Okay, so uh, let's start. Uh, let's start probably from the agenda. So today we are going to talk about the uh, um, ASP-oriented programming. Uh, also, we are going to talk about the AUP. Uh, I will use this AUP abbreviation just to simplify. So we are talk we are going to talk about the AUP concepts, main concepts and terminology, uh, about the implementation of the AUP inside the Spring framework. Uh, also, a few words about the alternative framework. Uh, it will be ASPJ and uh, some best practices and concerns, uh, limitations, and so on. And after that, uh, if you will have the time, we can have some uh, short uh, quest questions and answer session. Uh, okay, let's get started. Um, so first of all, aspect-oriented programming. What, it, what is aspect-oriented programming? It is uh, the programming paradigm. Uh, as you all probably know, paradigm it is uh, some set of the concepts, times, rules, best practices, and so on. Uh, so the main idea of this paradigm it is um, it is the separation of cross-cutting concerns from the business logic in your application. Uh, this is achieved by adding some additional behavior to existing code without modifying code itself. So as a result, you will have uh, your business logic. Uh, independent uh, from your cross-cutting logic, and uh, they are not tightly coupled. Uh, so when I when when I am talking about the cross-cutting concern, probably I should explain what I mean. Uh, so cross-cutting concerns. Actually, uh, if you talk about the cross-cutting concern, uh, actually when I am talking about the cross-cutting concern um, logic functionality, it is uh, such part of our application that is not related only to uh, some parts of the application or some module or some layer. It's actually something what is applied across your application. Uh, from here, uh, we have the name cross-cutting concern. Uh, so uh, actually, the good example of such uh, cross-cutting concern will be logging. Uh, for example, uh, your application have multiple modules, uh, multiple layers, multiple mm, domains, and uh, logging is something what you need to implement, inject in your application across all these modules, independent how, uh, what is the business logic, what is the idea of such modules. So this uh, picture which you can see on this slide actually shows uh, what is uh, the cross-cutting concern and how it's applied, injected inside your multi-model, for example, application. Uh, here I specified also the list of the probably most popular, most used uh, in the applications cross-cutting concerns. Here we have the security. Uh, for example, you can have some authorization logic across all your modules some caching, tracing, uh, exception handling, uh, as I already mentioned, logging, monitoring, transaction management, and uh, auditing. Uh, from my own experience, um, if you talk about the custom AUP implementation, uh, I was able to use AUP for the uh, auditing for custom logic to audit some, some, some stuff, and also for logging plus monitoring for uh, kind of just to uh, actually we use just to uh, write the time of the execution of uh, this or another method and it will help help it and it uh, helped us to uh, determine where we have some performance gaps uh, and so on so it was very helpful uh, I think. I mean, AOP, using AOP for such uh, cross-cutting concern. And also the idea of the AOP is to avoid the duplication uh, as you are writing this cross-cutting concern logic in one place, instead of writing uh, your transaction management stuff, for example, in every uh, DAO layer class or DAO layer method. Uh, instead of this, you are writing this logic in single place. So we, uh, so AOP can, can, can help us avoid duplication. Okay, let's uh, move forward. Uh, so let's talk about the AUP main concepts and terminology. 
So as you can see on this picture, uh, the main concepts of the AOP is the join point, advice, point cut, target object, aspect, proxy, and weaving. Let's go uh, through all of them uh, one by one and try to understand what is the idea of each uh, concept of each item of this IOP uh, paradigm. Uh, so let's start from the aspect. Uh, actually, uh, aspect, uh, it, is the, um, it is the module which uh, contains all logic which you would like uh, to implement, I mean, uh, cross-cutting logic. So, for example, if you would like to uh, expose some uh, logging cross-cutting cross logic, you would, you will create the single uh, aspect. Uh, it will be class. Uh, you name it logging aspect. So, all logic which you would like to inject into your business logic will be uh, will be a part of the aspect. So, it's a kind of main uh, object of the aspect aspect-oriented programming. Uh, so, uh, next thing which I would like to discuss is the join point. So, actually, uh, as I already said, in Aspect, we have all logic which we uh, would like to inject into our uh, business logic. And join point, it's actually the place, the exact place in your application code where this uh, Aspect logic will be implemented, where it will be plugged in. So, for example, uh, if you would like to add some mm, logging logic for all setters in your application, uh, all setters inside your application actually will be uh, join points. Uh, so it's, it will be the points where this uh, aspect logic is it will be injected. Uh, next thing, it is the point cut. So uh, we have the aspect where we have our logic, we have the join points, uh, but we um, we have to say our AOP framework have to uh, which actually join points should be uh, should be used uh, should where we should uh, where we should implement or um, plug in this aspect. So the point cut is a kind of um, expression. It's a predicate which uh, help helps uh, AOP framework to match the join points. So, for example, if you would like to uh, do some logic before uh, before every public method, you should specify the point cut, which will actually find all public methods. And uh, as a result, the logic uh, described in your aspect will be uh, injected uh, before every public method in your application code. Or, for example, if you talk about the setters, you also can specify the um, such pattern, such expression, and as a result, your logic will be uh, applied to all setters. Uh, the next uh, concept of the AUP it is the advice. So advice is the actual the um, actual place where you are describing the logic. So uh, if you talk about the aspect, it's your main class in which you should specify the point cuts and in which you can specify one or single advices. Uh, so for more uh, like a, a full grain control, uh, in AUP, we have five uh, types of the aspects, uh, of the advices, sorry. Uh, so uh, it is the before advice, it is the after advice, it's after returning advice, after throwing advice, and around advice. So if you talk about the before advice, it's actually the logic which we would like to uh, execute before uh, your join point. So for example, you have some method and you would like to do some validation before this method is executed. So for this reason, you can use the before advice. Um, next type of the advice is it's after. So this uh, after advice will contain the logic which will be executed uh, after your method execution, for example. Um, it, and it doesn't matter if uh, your method, for example, uh, throws some exception or it, uh, and, or it is a happy pass and your method returns some result. Uh, anyway, this advice will be, uh, will be executed uh, after, uh, after your method finished. Uh, after, uh, now we can see that we have two more specific uh, advices. It's the after returning advice and after throwing advice. Actually, the idea is uh, clear. 
uh, after returning advice will be triggered only, this logic will be executed only when we have the returned result. And uh, if you talk about the after throwing advice, um, it will be executed uh, in case when you uh, have some exception thrown. Uh, so kind of if you talk about this after throwing advice, we can uh, imagine the finally block. And uh, actually to not write this finally block in each uh, in each place, you can just write this this logic in the after throwing advice and it will be used everywhere where you uh, everywhere where you, in places where you described uh, in point cut. And the last type of the advice, it is the around advice. Uh, actually, it's most powerful advice in my opinion because uh, this advice uh, gives you uh, possibility to um, write your some additional logic before and after it means that you can surround your uh, business logic with some cross cutting logic so actually the the logic which is uh, stored in the around uh, advice will be executed before and after uh, your business logic uh, okay, the next uh, thing, it is the target object. So uh, we are moving to the Spring KOP. And uh, uh, if you talk about, about the Spring KOP, in Spring KOP, KOP is implemented uh, using the proxies. Uh, by default, as far as I remember, it's uh, JDK dynamic proxies, which uh, actually are based on the interfaces. So the tar we have the target object. Uh, the object which uh, actually contains the business logic, and we have the um, interface which this object uh, implements. So the Spring creates for us the proxy uh, proxy object, which also implements the same interface. So as a result, we can uh, call the method of the target object and also add additional uh, logic from the advices. So that's actually, if you talk about the target object, it's the object which should be advised. And if you talk about the proxy, it the actually the um, object will which will uh, do all stuff. I mean the advice stuff and also uh, delegate uh, work to the target object. Uh, I mean invoke the target object method, uh, which actually was uh, called by caller. Uh, and the last thing which uh, I would like to uh, discuss is the viewing. Actually, the viewing it is the process of the um, kind of it's a um, process of the binding uh, your business logic and your cross cutting logic. Actually, how it is uh, how it is binded together. So, uh, if you talk about in, in scope of the Spring AOP, um, this thing is. Uh, the viewing in the Spring KOP framework is uh, the runtime. Uh, during the startup of the application, Spring application, uh, Spring creates for you uh, in the runtime, creates for you the proxies with uh, specific advices, which uh, should be implemented before the target object method execution. Uh, okay, now we are going to uh, to the Spring frame framework uh, and the examples. And probably you have some questions uh, regarding the previous sections. If you have, you can ask them now. Uh, please let me know what the main difference between uh, between uh, as aspect and uh, point cut point cut and the join point in okay the, fir the first you, the first two entity you mentioned okay uh, the difference between join point and point cut yeah yep uh, so actually uh, in point cut you are describing the which join point i would like to uh, advise i mean that uh, point cut is the thing which you, which helps you to say uh, hey spring I, I would like to for example uh, right to have some before logic uh, before each method which is in the package uh, service, for example. And uh, actually, join point it will be every method in service package. So, like a point cut is the single uh, entity, and join points you have you can have many. Uh, so, in, join points is all method that accept uh, this point cut. Yeah, actually, which matches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank right. you. 
Uh, any more questions or we can move to the Spring uh, framework implementation of the AUP? Okay, so if no questions, uh, let's move forward. So uh, if you're talking about the Spring frame framework and implementation of the AUP in, in this framework, uh, it is not fully, uh, fully completed uh, AUP framework, actually. The main idea of the Spring AUP framework was to have some integration between the Spring core between the EUC uh, container and uh, the AUP approaches. So actually, mm, the idea was to provide some framework which will support AUP, but not full support. Uh, I will uh, explain later why not full, but actually it's uh, provide the support the, of the AUP in Spring ecosystem and uh, be able to work with uh, Spring pins, but in the same way have a possibility to provide some um, cross cutting concern in scope of, in scope of the Spring. Uh, so let's uh, see how we can uh, configure at uh, the Spring uh, AUP to your project. So if you are using the just Spring uh, without boot, uh, you can just add the Spring AUP annotation and uh, uh, sorry, not annotation dependency and the uh, dependency for the AspectJ. Uh, actually, um, why we are adding here uh, dependency for AspectJ? First of all, uh, in Spring AOP, we can configure aspects, our main classes, which will uh, contain the logic. We can configure it using the XML, or we can configure it using the annotations. For me, actually for me, uh, I prefer to use the annotations. I, 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 I didn't like uh, the approach with XMLs. So, uh, and actually the aspect J, it is the separate framework which, will, which we will discuss uh, in a few words uh, later, but it's uh, the separate framework for also which uh, main idea is the AOP. But also this uh, framework, this, uh, this framework provides a set of the annotations which can be uh, used with the Spring AOP together. So to have the ability to configure your aspects via um, annotations, you should add also the aspect J dependency. Too. And uh, in case of the Spring, uh, in case of the Spring Core project, uh, you should also enable this aspect J auto proxy annotation. You should add this annotation uh, to tell Spring to find the the classes which are annotated by aspect annotation and uh, to search for advices, point cuts, and other annotations which is which are provided by aspect J. Uh, if you talk about the Spring Boot project, uh, as usual, it's simpler because uh, Spring Boot provides a lot of things from, from the box. You just need to add the Spring Boot Starter AOP, which actually contains all these dependencies which are needed. And uh, even you shouldn't uh, write this enable aspect J of the proxy uh, annotation because um, uh, Spring Boot has his own AOP auto configuration, which actually finds the uh, dependency of the uh, Spring AOP and uh, will add this annotation for you. So you shouldn't do nothing. As you can see, to configure and start work with Spring AOP, uh, it's uh, very easy. So it's a uh, kind of benefit of using such uh, framework as for me. So let's move to the examples and see how we can uh, create uh, AOP concepts in Spring framework. So to create the aspect, you just need to create the simple Java class, uh, mark it by this uh, aspect annotation, and this is it. It will be enough for Spring to understand that it is aspect and uh, it, sh it should, it should um, <clears throat> check for the advices and for point cuts inside this class. Uh, the main thing uh, which I need to mention here is that we also should add a component annotation here uh, for the uh, Spring core to just to um, scan this uh, aspect as a bin. So you should add aspect and component. If you add on the aspect, it uh, won't work because Spring cannot uh, find the uh, bin for this uh, aspect. Uh, next thing, it is the point cut. So to create point cut, you should uh, create the void method without body. 
uh, the uh, name of the method, it will be name of the point cut, which you can uh, use in other places. So you just need to specify the class where this method was introduced and uh, the name of the method, and you can easily use it. And also you can see that we have the specific point cut annotation um, in which you are writing the point cut expression. Uh, so that's how you can create the point cut. Uh, so every point cut expression, which is specified in the point cut uh, annotation, it starts from the point cut designator. And before we, we talk about the point cut designators, I would like to say about one limitation of the Spring KLP. So due to the um, like a nature of the proxying uh, mechanism used uh, by the Spring KLP, uh, Spring KLP supports only um, join points, uh, we, which are which can be only a uh, method execution, public method execution. Uh, so uh, actually, if we use the Spring KLP, we can add additional logic, our uh, cross-cutting logic, only to the method execution. So before, after, after returning around, but it's only about the uh, method execution. Uh, we also can add the logic for the um, protected methods uh, execution, but it uh, in case if we are using the CGLib uh, approach with proxies, it's actually when the proxy um, when the proxy uh, for the target object it extends uh, proxy extends target object, so it has uh, ability to use to also work with the protected. Uh, visibility of the math. So uh, in scope of the, of the AOP, we are working only with the math execution. So uh, actually, if you talk about the another uh, fully supported framework, uh, AspectJ, uh, it also uh, supports um, such join points like a method call, for example, uh, constructor call, some static methods execution, uh, some static uh, field initialization and uh, many more others. So uh, Spring KLP has such significant uh, limitation, but in most cases it's enough to have only uh, execution in join point. So uh, why I told all this story? It's because the if we we now going to talk about all these point cut designation designators used in the point cut annotation. But you should understand that uh, due to this limitation, uh, some of them mm, in scope of the Spring KUP, they cannot show their power, can, cannot show their the idea, but I will try to explain. So let's move. Uh, let's start from the execution point, point cut designator. Uh, so you, in point cut annotation, you just write execution and in the parentheses you write the, uh, some expression. So actually what it means, uh, if you would like to um, add your um, advice logic to all public methods, you can write such expression in your point cut, uh, write your advice, uh, pass the um, point cut to this advice. I will show later how it can be uh, done. And uh, as a result, our public method will be intercepted by your advice. Uh, if again, uh, those examples we already seen, again with setters, uh, also, you can specify, uh, for example, the package. Uh, so all method executions uh, in such package will be intercepted by your advice. Uh, also, you can specify the specific uh, service where, uh, in which your methods, uh, all your method execution public will be intercepted. Uh, let's move to other uh, point cut designators. Uh, so we have the within uh, within target and arcs. Uh, so actually, uh, here uh, if you talk about the within and uh, the execution in scope of the Spring KUP, uh, it doesn't matter what you will use; the result will be the same. Because as you can see, using the execution, you can specify the service uh, package in which you would like to search for the methods executions which you would like to advise. And the same you have with this within uh, point cut designator. Uh, so actually in scope of the Spring KUP, you can just use the execution and it will be fine uh, for you. But if you talk again about the um, Aspect J you know, framework, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it can have another joint points, not only execution. And in this case, uh, you will see the significant difference because 
uh, if you write the within in scope of the um, some service uh, package and you write in uh, using this aspect J, uh, you will have a lot of different another join points which will be uh, also um, advised some uh, constructor calls whatever. But in scope of the Spring KUP, it's better to use execution because in future you can move to the. Uh, in future, you can just um, uh, would like to add uh, some support of the aspect J full support, not only annotations, and you will have the issues because uh, you expected that uh, you will advise only the method execution, and if you use uh, in the Spring KUP this within, uh, you will have a lot of uh, different joint points which. Uh, are not expected to be advised, so you will have this headache. So it's not the good approach for you. Just for Spring KUP, it will be enough to use execution for now. Uh, the next uh, uh, next point card designator it is the target. Uh, so here you can specify the um, interface which will uh, which will be implemented by your target object. So uh, if your service, for example, implements account service interface, uh, the all methods in this service will be intercepted by your advice. So you can specify the specific type uh, and Spring KOP will know that all methods of this specific type, uh, all methods in the inside target object of this specific type uh, will be um, advised. And the next one, it is the arcs. Uh, actually, this point card designator you can write in point card annotation, and as a result, uh, all methods which uh, have the parameter uh, which implements serializable uh, will be uh, like uh, matched to this point card and will be advised. So uh, all methods which uh, kind of uh, accept the parameter which class implements serializable will be uh, will be joint points. Uh, okay, let's move to another um, designators, uh, point card designators. So uh, all this with annotation sign, uh, the idea of all these um, all these uh, point card designators is uh, that uh, it's about the annotations. So if you talk about the within and target uh, examples of the point card designators, uh, again, in scope of the spin key, I will talk uh, firstly about the idea. So the idea is that your uh, target object, which you would like to advise, uh, add some additional behavior, cross-cutting behavior for this target object. Uh, this object should be, this class should be uh, marked by, uh, this object should be marked by transactional annotation in this case. And as a result, all the methods inside this uh, target object will be advised. Um, what is the difference between within and the target? Uh, in scope, again, again, in scope of the Spring AOP, it doesn't matter. You can use both, but it's better to use target because uh, if if you again move to the aspect J uh, implementation, uh, as I already mentioned, aspect J can work with static um, content, some static uh, field initialization, and so on, static methods execution, and in this case, uh, actually Spring AOP. Uh, not Spring AOP, AOP framework, which you will use, uh, will not have the information about the target object, will not have the access to, to this. Uh, it will work only with the class. So that's the difference. So you, in these cases, you uh, you should use the within because it's related to the declared type of the target object, but not to the object itself. Um, yeah, and uh, such annotation should have the retention policy uh, set to the class. Uh, okay, so, but in scope of the uh, Spring KUP, it, uh, it's better just to use the target and uh, annotate your uh, classes by some annotation, right? Target and all these classes which are uh, annotated by this annotation will be uh, used as um, advised objects, target objects. Uh, next, uh, next, next, next uh, point card designation, designator, it is the <clears throat> Um, annotation. So, as the idea of this uh, point card designator is uh, that your join point, 
uh, should be annotated by some specific annotation which you pass uh, inside the um, like a parameter. So it means that if your method in your service, for example, is um, or in your um, repository uh, class um, is marked by transactional annotation, it will be advised by your uh, aspect logic. Yeah, and the last one, not last one, we have one more, but next one is uh, the arcs with uh, annotation sign. Uh, the idea is the same as uh, arcs without, but the difference is that your parameter, which is passed to the method, which should be uh, which should be the join point, uh, the parameter should, the class of the parameter should have this annotation, should be marked with this annotation. And uh, the uh, important thing is that it should uh, have um, it should have retention policy runtime because, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, this uh, all viewing process uh, in Spring uh, AOP is pro is provided during the runtime, so it's important that Spring uh, can see this annotation, understand that this annotation exists during the runtime. So you should specify, if you create, for example, your custom annotation, you, you should specify the retention policy um, runtime for this annotation. And the last one, uh, point card designator, it's the bin. Uh, so in bin point card designator, you can specify the name of the bin, exact bin, and all the methods of such bin will be uh, advised by your uh, aspect, or you can specify the wildcard expression, and as a result, or bins with a uh, name which contains service will be uh, advised, all methods, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, how we can use the bin uh, point card designators. Uh, so with point cards and its designators, that's it. Uh, do you have some questions regarding this uh, logic regarding point cards? Uh, okay, if no question, we can move forward. And uh, next, uh, I would like to discuss uh, the um, advices and show the examples how advices can be created in scope of the Spring AOP. Uh, so, um, actually, to uh, create the before advice, as we previously mentioned, we have five types of advice. So, let's start uh, one by one. Uh, to create the before advice, uh, every advice type. Uh, has uh, his own annotation provided by AspectJ uh, framework, and you can uh, use it. So uh, if you talk about the before advice, you have the before annotation in which you can specify, uh, in which you should specify your point cut expression, your point cut, and as a result, uh, before, um, before every um, method execution in your DAO uh, package, you will have uh, the logic. You before each method execution, you will have the logic uh, specified in this do access check method. So you can specify any logic, some verification, some logging, some security checks, whatever. It depends on your requirements. But you can write uh, logic, and in every every uh, method in such uh, package, this logic will be applied during the runtime. So that's actually what, uh, I, when, I, when I told about the avoid code duplication, you just write once and it will be applied everywhere. Uh, not everywhere, but uh, you can specify the point cut where you should uh, apply this logic when you want and uh, apply this logic. So uh, next uh, type of the advice is after returning advice. It also has its own annotation, but you can see that it has also uh, the different, it's only different way to specify the um, point cut. So here we specified uh, directly the expression and it uh, will work, but uh, also you can specify the point cut and specify where the method uh, annotated this point, point cut annotation uh, exists. So here we specified again the point cut, uh, which is in another class, as you can see. And also we have the parameter returning. Uh, so actually, uh, with the red value, uh, red val, 
uh, what is returning? Returning it's actually uh, as it is the after returning advice, it will be triggered after the method returns some result. And actually, in this returning get val, you will have this result. So you can pass th this uh, thing into um, the method parameter into your advice. As parameter, uh, you should use the same uh, name. It's important. And as a result, you will have the uh, access to the re result which was returned by your method, which was intercepted by this advice. And you can do some post logic with your result, whatever, log, uh, do some checks, uh, store somewhere, whatever. That's the example of the after returning uh, advice. Uh, next advice, it is the after returning advice. Uh, it's uh, similar to the after returning advice, but it's uh, related to the uh, to the cases when your method throwing some exceptions. So you have this throwing uh, parameter in, in inside your after throwing uh, advice annotation. And again, you have the access to the exception which was thrown uh, during the target, uh, target object method execution. So as a result, you can log this exception or resolve it or do some, something uh, with such exception. So you have the access for the exception, which was wrong. Uh, okay, and next uh, advice, it is the after finally, uh, also named as finally advice. Uh, it uh, contains only, it's after annotation, which contains only the um, point cut, which again is stored in another class. Uh, this um, advice will be executed uh, in every scenario uh, in every scenario after method execution. If your method throw exception, if return something, whatever, uh, this uh, point cut will be uh, executed. So uh, even even if you talk about this example, we have this after throwing uh, with the same uh, as I see. Yes, the same point cut is in this after. Um, advice with the same point cut. In this case, uh, the, um, the methods uh, which uh, will match the joint points, which are method executions, which match those point cuts, which are the same, will be uh, kind of advised twice because uh, in, in, in case if uh, some exception, oh sorry, um, in case if some exception is strong, and the same situation will be if the, we will have the after and the after returning. And if your methods uh, will return some result, of course, you will have uh, the logic after returning executed and also uh, logic in the after executed. So you should uh, take into account this uh, behavior. Okay, and the last type of the advice, it is the um, round advice. Uh, so it also has its own annotation in which you specify the point cut, which will be used to match your joint points, your method executions. And uh, the important things that you should specify uh, as a parameter of such advice, a uh, proceeding joint point uh, object, actually it is used to uh, call the target object uh, method which should be invoked. So actually, as you can see, you can specify in such advice, you can specify the some logic which will be executed before. You should uh, call the target uh, object method, which actually um, initially should be, uh, caller initially would like to call. And also you should add the after, uh, some after um, this execution logic. Uh, so as a result, you will have the your um, like a business logic surrounded by your cross-cutting logic, which logic which you would like to add, and uh, of course you should return the result of the method execution to to kind of not broke um, break something. Uh, that's it about the advices. Uh, do you have some questions about the advices and how the uh, how create them? Uh, Actually, I've created some uh, just dummy examples, but I'm not sure that it's uh, interesting to show them now. Uh, I can uh, add the link to the GitHub uh, repository, or you can just even create the project by yourself. It will take you 10 or 50 minutes to create Spring Boot project and create uh, add the dependencies which I specified. 
and create some few different uh, types of the um, advices, create few methods and test all this stuff. Or you can use a link which I will add to this and uh, to this presentation and try to play around with those stuff. But in general, it's uh, those, all these annotations are self-descriptive and uh, they do what they actually uh, should do. <laughs> So nothing, uh, there is no any magic, this this stuff. You just creating and see that uh, your methods, which are joined uh, using the point cut, uh, are uh, advised by this or another advice. Uh, Volodymyr, I have a question for the previous uh, slide you showed uh, the Alexander's uh, speaking. Uh, yes, will this uh, point cut, which you specified and the annotation arguments will apply to? For for the all, for all methods uh, for the overloaded uh, also or will be apply or we need to specify overloaded methods as well. Did mm. you did you understand my did, question? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, let's move, for example, to some. Mm, uh, no, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean uh, the. Uh, no, please move forward here. Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, you, you here, at the, uh, for for example, at around mm -hmm. annotation, you uh, specified yeah. business service method, right? And what if we have as a service or uh, business service uh, overloaded, yeah, method with uh, an, with uh, another you amount can, of arguments? You, you, uh, shouldn't, we, you shouldn't actually overload the, this method. This method, it will be the yeah. method which describes the point cut. So, actually, it is devoid a method without uh, parameters. Actually, you can pass parameters, but it's only about the parameters of that target object execution. Actually, in next slide, I will show you how it works. But in general, uh, if you talk about this um, business service method, how it name uh, business service? Yeah. So it's about the just void method without the body where you actually have the point cut annotation and specifying the um, some execution for example uh, of all public methods in some package mm -hmm. okay so, so it's just about the point cut so only this method with such signature will be used and uh, to, 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 to determine which uh, joint points should be which methods uh, should be used as a joint point okay okay thank you uh, okay, uh, some another questions maybe. Uh, okay, so if no questions, uh, let's move actually to the parameters uh, which we can pass. So imagine the situation when you, for example, uh, would like to add some be before uh, logic to your um, methods in the DAO layer, but uh, before uh, in this before logic, you would like to have the um, ability to um, work with the parameter which was passed to the to this DAO layer methods uh, to do some check, for example, to check any logic. So you can do this. Uh, you can do this uh, by uh, specifying the um, this arcs uh, point cut designator with name of the parameter and uh, you should you should specify as the parameter of the advice method the same um, the same name so as a result uh, all methods uh, parameters you can uh, the method parameter which is used which actually is advised you will have be, in the, in your before logic you will have the access to this parameter so uh, so you can do before the method execution some stuff with this parameter and check it uh, and so on. Also, you can do this uh, by uh, specifying this the same stuff in the point cut, and after that, just uh, use the point cut. Those things are in the same class, so you shouldn't specify the um, whole like uh, pass to the method which describes the point cut. So as a result, you can write such point cut specify the arcs uh, in such point cut and uh, bind it to the method, uh, to the point cut method argument. 
And as a result, uh, you can use the before advice where you're specifying your uh, data account data access operation point cut with the perimeter account. And uh, again, you can use it uh, for your checks before. So there are two uh, different approaches, but they do the same thing. So that's, and it, uh, this approach can be used with uh, any type of the advice. So if you want to work with the parameters, uh, of your methods, of your join points, you can easily do it by using one of these approaches. Uh, so that's it uh, with examples. Again, I will add the GitHub repo. You can play around and try just to not waste our time uh, for now. Uh, okay, so uh, next I would like to uh, talk about a little bit about the limitations and alternative for the Spring AOP framework. Uh, so if about the limitation, we already discussed a few of them, but let's uh, just to summarize, let's talk about all of them, uh, about the main of them. Uh, so um, one of the limitation is that we cannot apply the Spring AOP to the final class and the final method and they cannot be overrided. Now, if you talk about the final classes, again, it's the case when you're using the um, uh, CGI lib uh, proxy approach. In this case, your proxy will try to extend the target object, which should be advised. But if your target object will be final, it cannot just do it. So you should take into account this limitation. It, especially if you would like to uh, not use uh, dynamic GDK proxies, but use instead uh, CGI proxies. Uh, as we already mentioned, it, uh, Spring AOP supports only method execution joint points. In most cases, it's uh, more than enough, but still it's a limitation. And probably significant for some requirements, it depends. Uh, so Spring AOP aspects aren't applying to the method code within the same class. So what uh, this item means? So uh, actually, probably, uh, probably you, most of you heard about such uh, interview question <laughs> regarding the transactional annotation and what will happen if you, uh, for example, have two methods transactional in your uh, repository class or service class and you will call in the same service class uh, one method from the another. Uh, will Spring create two transactions or one? So the correct questions for such, uh, correct answers for such question, sorry, it is that the transaction will be created once. Uh, it's due to, again, to the proxy nature, uh, proxy mechanism used to, um, to advise the method. So proxy will uh, work only the, with the outer method and at all transactional related logic for the um, transaction creation, transaction commit or transaction rollback, but only to the outer method. Uh, to, to do it with the inner method, you should call it directly without uh, any delegators. So that's one uh, of the limitation due to the proxy nature, proxy approach used for the Spring AOP. Um, so next limitation is that it only works with the bin managed by Spring. It's actually the, the, li the limitation in scope of the AOP in general, but in the same time, it is the um, kind of idea of the Spring AOP just to have the integration between the AOP principles and your Spring ecosystem. Uh, so it's not kind of limitation of the Spring AOP framework, it's just in general. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, uh, the Spring AOP used the runtime viewing. So during startup of the, your Spring application, the proxies are created, your uh, target objects are proxied. So uh, if you talk about the startup time and also about the calls, it will be a little bit um, not so good in scope of the performance because, uh, for example, if you talk about the aspect J, it supports uh, compile time uh, viewing. So, um, if the performance is uh, kind of important thing 
uh, for you, you should also take into account this, uh, this specific, which is also a limitation, the scope of the performance from the performance perspective. But anyway, all these limitations are not so critical. And uh, from my own experience, the most of the tasks, uh, most of the um, generic cross-cutting concerns can be uh, implemented using the Spring KOP. That's why this framework is still uh, still exists, uh, still supported, and uh, also the advantage of using Spring KOP is that it is really easy. It's uh, just adding few dependencies. Uh, AspectJ provides you already annotations which are self-descriptive and and, and that's it, you're just writing uh, the uh, aspect advices and the magic uh, like uh, works. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, if these limitations uh, are not uh, applicable, are not um, acceptable uh, for your requirements, you can uh, work, for example, with the aspect J. It's actually the full, fully uh, AOP supported framework, probably as far as I know, uh, it is the most uh, popular now framework if you talk about the AOP. Uh, so actually, uh, if you talk about the aspect J, I think that uh, this topic deserves the separate presentation. Uh, but in general, just to get the idea when you should uh, think about not using Spring AOP, but moving to the aspect J, uh, I provided some uh, this table with the um, kind of details, uh, pros of the aspect J approach, which can uh, help you uh, to figure out this the limitation which uh, Spring KOP provides for you. So, for example, uh, aspect J using the compile time uh, weaving. So, what it means that aspect J has its own compiler, and as a result of the compilation you already uh, have before your application startup, you, you already have the compiled class with your uh, cross-cutting concern logic. So the class already contains the business logic plus aspects. Uh, yeah, so it's, it, it, it's a cool thing which Aspect J can provide for you. Uh, also, uh, Aspect J support is, uh, can be applied not only for Spring Beans, every domain, domain object in your application can be uh, advised in scope of the Aspect J framework. Uh, all types of the point cuts uh, are supported of the Aspect J. As we talked, uh, the Spring AOP supports only uh, six or, or seven, but uh, some of them are the same in scope of the Spring AOP. If you're talking about the Aspect J, uh, in scope of the, of the aspect J, you can see the real, real uh, idea and real power of such uh, point cut designators. Uh, and also, of course, the join points. Uh, so if you talk about the Spring KOP, you are binded only to the map to execution. In aspect J, you can bind very much more things and uh, you can provide more uh different um, cross-cutting concerns implement in different places for different joint points so more joint points supported by aspect j so you you, you should think uh, uh, that if you are not okay with the limitation of spring KOP, you should know that uh, you can go to the aspect j documentation and try to see is is this solution is okay for you is acceptable for your requirements uh, probably that's it with Aspect J. Uh, so probably to finish this presentation, uh, some best practices and concerns. Uh, so uh, AOP is not a silver bullet. Uh, don't use it everywhere. So very often when uh, some developer start work with uh, Spring AOP, it, uh, it starts thinking that, oh, it's uh, really cool. I will use it everywhere for every task, you should uh, understand that uh, it brings some complexity, some um, overheads during runtime in scope of the Spring AOP. Uh, it's hard to debug such code. So uh, you should really use only uh, in this place where it's required, where it's, uh, where it's really brings your um, benefits. 
benefits for your uh, application. The next best practice is the one cross cutting concern should be matched to one aspect implementation. Just to uh, follow the single responsibility principle, it will be great to, for example, if you have logging, auditing, some transaction management stuff, uh, cross cutting logic, uh, it will be better to just create a single uh, as uh, aspect uh, class for logging, a single aspect class for uh, transactional management, and so on, just to follow the single responsibility uh, principle, and it will be easier for uh, understanding for other guys in your team. Uh, so next uh, best practice is that any point cut should be expressed by expression in such ways that joint points set will be narrowed as much as possible. So idea is that you can write, of course, the um, point cut. Uh, we see such examples uh, that uh, please uh, search for all public methods, but uh, usually you don't need uh, to apply such logic for all public methods because it can bring you large problems because you, you uh, some methods which you are not aware of will be advised and it's not a good approach should so you should just uh, find such write such expression which will find only those joint points which you really control which you really want to be advised uh, so remember about this because it's dangerous dangerous to have the advice have the methods which you want advice advice and it's overhead, it's just the overhead for your application. Uh, next thing is the use the least uh, powerful advice that can implement the required behavior. It's easy uh, and it's obvious because uh, you shouldn't, if you have some bef before logic, you shouldn't use, um, for example, around uh, advice for such uh, stuff because it doesn't make sense, any, any sense for you. You can use before and it will be enough to solve your task. So. First of all, think about your task, what you should, what, what cross-cutting concern and what should uh, the logic for this cross-cutting concern do and in which place and select the correct um, correct advice and use it. Uh, do not inv invent wheels, uh, use existing approaches. So uh, Spring from the box provides uh, a lot of uh, existing aspects uh, which can help you solve your task. So, First of all, uh, before starting implementing your own uh, aspects, your own logic, uh, it's better to check. Uh, probably Spring can uh, provide you something ready, something well tested, and uh, just to not create something new, you can use the existing approaches. For example, like a controller advice for the advising the um, for the error handling. Uh, transactional for transactional management and so on so if you see that your requirements of your application can be covered by something provided by spring great you shouldn't uh, create something new it's not necessary for you uh so as i mentioned always take into account overheads which you will have uh, when you create new advices more advices with difficult logic you should take into account that it will bring some overhead for your application so don't use it everywhere. It's a uh, link to the first um, item. Uh, and also you should take into account always the Spring proxy approach and limitations. Uh, and if uh, they are not, uh, and if they are not covering your requirements in your application, it's better to move to the Aspect J or other fully supported uh, AOP framework. Uh, looks like, I'm finished. Do you have any questions regarding the advices about the limitations, concerns in general about the presentation? 